Rub up your engines! Quint Flores, so Scotty, is it true that premium gas gets better fuel economy? Depends. <laughs> Depends on the engine, the setup, your car, the year, all kinds of things. For example, if you put premium gas in a modern Toyota Corolla, you might even get worse gas mileage because it's made for regular gasoline. But if you have an old, worn out engine, premium gas will probably get you a little bit better because it will burn better in an old, worn out engine. The price of premium is so much higher than the price of regular. For most reasons, it's stupid to even buy premium gas. Now, let's say you get something like a Mustang EcoBoost four cylinder, it puts out 300 something horsepower right on premium and then on regular gas it's like 295 or something so you lose a little bit of power it's still run okay just throwing it in a car unless you got a junker that has really got problems it might run a little bit better with premium but in most cases just use regular makes the most sense mr longitude says is it normal for a 2010 honda fit to have transmission issues with 80,000 miles no that's not particularly normal honda their weak points are their automatic transmissions they make the best engines in the world the transmissions no they're not the best in the world there's nothing you can do about that but depends what your problem is i'd say change the fluid Hondas, they're particular use Honda fluid. I would change the fluid in a Honda every 40,000 miles. It's easy, cheap to do. You can learn to do it yourself to prevent problems from occurring. Because a lot of times it could just be that it's got some dirt in it and it won't shift right. Now, if that doesn't fix it, yeah, then it's generally a very expensive endeavor. You want to find a guy like me to scan it and pray that it's something like maybe a solenoid and not the transmission needing rebuilding. Brian Kreese says, what are your thoughts on a Chevy S10 pickup truck? All right, well, I'm not a fan of a lot of modern GM. Their quality's kind of been going down the toilet for quite some time. On the other hand, you can often get them a lot cheaper than you can get, say, the best one, which is a Toyota. If it's a deal that you got to buy a truck, especially if you're looking at a used one, you look at a used like a Tacoma, eh, those things are sometimes 30-something grand even used, right? You get S10 used a lot cheaper than that, and it still might be a decent pickup truck. You always have to balance price versus quality. And if they're kind of even. Hey, I'd always go for the Toyota because it's better. But if the price of the Toyota is way higher and the Chevy's a lot, lot cheaper used, hey, I'd go. I'd go for a used one if it was that much cheaper. You will save a lot of money if you buy a decent pickup truck like that, or say a Nissan Frontier. If it's going to be a lot less money, sometimes you don't buy the most reliable one because it costs two to three times as much. Gabriel says, is it recommended to disconnect the battery when I replace the side airbags of a two-door 2003 Honda Accord? Yeah, anytime you're going to mess with airbags, disconnect the battery and before you even do anything to the airbags, when you get near them, unplug their connectors too. Sometimes there's a little residual electricity left in them. So, I mean, what you might do too, and a lot of guys will do this, is you take the battery terminals off the battery, then turn the headlight on. And if there's any residual electricity in the system, and the headlights will get rid of that electricity. It's a good idea. You don't want the things going off when you're working on it. Legend says, Scotty, is changing my coolant good enough to prevent corrosion or do I need a full flush? Here's the thing. Modern cars use special coolant, different than the green stuff when I was a kid, and it lasts quite some time. If your coolant is just old and it's not all corroded and dirty looking, you can just drain it out, fill it up. But if it's been just neglected for 10, 15 years and it's all dirty, then you really got to flush the system out. Realize this, the flushes that you buy today aren't that strong. They don't do that much cleaning. If you corroded your system, odds are you're going to have to buy another radiator or probably heater core too if you let it go too long before you change it out. Normally, if you change it, say if it's a Toyota 5, 6, 7 year coolant, change it every 6, 7 years, you're not going to have any problems. You just need to change it. You don't need to flush it. But if you got one that's all corroded up, then yeah, you really need to get it flushed. And it still might not solve your problems because the radiators today are plastic radiators, but that's the tanks. The aluminum is the part that cools it inside. And it's still metal, but it's aluminum and it pits inside and once it's pitted you can flush it all you want it isn't going to fix it you'd have to buy a new radiator then. Bill Nihilus uh, Scotty straight six versus v6 what do you prefer for longevity reliability and ease to work on oh it's straight six by far because there's more working room instead of having a v it's straight so there's less moving parts they just don't make them because they don't get the good gas mileage the v6s get a little bit better gas mileage so hardly anybody uses a straight six other than bmw because that's kind of their forte although Mazda just came out 
out with one of their fancy cars that's got a straight six cylinder engine in it. They're interesting engines. I had a Ford Maverick with a straight six that ran forever. I mean, hey, I paid 500 bucks for it and drove it for 10 years and sold to a guy for 250 bucks. So, I like a straight six engine, but the engineers don't these days. Nathan Hernandez says, I got a 2016 Camaro. I put a motor and transmission, now it won't start, only cranks. All right, well, something has gone amiss, right? Watch my video, fixing a car that cranks but doesn't start up. Watch my video, you get all the clues of things to check. What you want to do is figure out it's cranking. Why isn't it starting? Have you lost spark or have you lost fuel? And the video will show you how you can test all that stuff yourself. You know, a simple thing is just take the air filter off, spray some starting fluid. If it starts and then dies, that means you're not getting any fuel to the engine. Maybe you didn't hook the pump up right, or maybe you messed up the wiring to the fuel injection system. It just depends on what went wrong, but that video will show you everything. James McCrew says, what do you think of a 2023 Honda Accord? All right, well, I always reserve my opinion on new things until they've been out four or five years, usually at least, right? Because you never know. Maybe they screwed something up and they're all going to fall apart. You never know. That's one reason I always buy used cars. I buy cars when they're like six to ten years old. And if they're still running good, then you know, well, they made them right, right? <laughs> and you get them a lot cheaper that way, too. I'm a cheapskate. I admit it, right? I like the Hondas, but... On the other hand, I would not buy one with a small turbocharged GDI engine because Honda makes great engines. They make probably the best two liter four cylinder engine in the world, but they start making these smaller ones, 1.5, 1.4 turbocharging GDI, they're not going to last as long. I don't like tiny engines. You know, you're better off with a decent sized engine for what you kind of power you want. Two liters is fine, right? But you start going one and a half, one and a quarter, putting turbos on them, they'll get power, but they won't last as long. Always look at the engine. Engine. The engine is the most important part of your car, so research the engine of the vehicle you're looking at. Sarah Abel says, what are your thoughts on a Honda hybrid SUV? Honda makes good products, right? Toyota's the one that really perfected hybrids with the Prius. Honda kind of played catch up on it. If I was going to buy a hybrid car, I know how complex they are. I have to fix the things all the the time. I would buy a Toyota if I was buying a hybrid because I know they last the longest. You're dealing with very complex technology and I wouldn't want to take a chance with really high tech technology if I was going to be driving one around. I wouldn't mess with a Honda hybrid just because of that. Hey, greetings from Ottawa, Canada. Hope all's well. My 2012 Hyundai Accent has a check engine light. The code is P50A. What do you think it should be? Okay, that's your idle air control valve. When you start your car up in the morning, it's supposed to rub a little bit higher. The idle air control valve is what does that. Your code is for a problem in the idle air control valve. So, take it out and clean it. It's a slide thing, and it might be that the slide stuck, and a little throttle spray cleaner you can buy at any auto parts store, you can clean it. That'll often fix it. They'll carbon up inside. You can watch my video to prevent this from happening. You can watch my video, Make Your Car Run Better with a Little Spray Cleaner. It shows you how you clean all whole throttle assembly, clean the mass airflow sensor. In your case, it's the idle air control valve. It's Maybe it's just sticking. You might not have to replace it. If you replace it, you can easily buy one and put it on yourself. But a lot of times you can clean them. Well, she says, Scotty, how do we schedule an appointment with you since you're now in Rhode Island? Just send me an email, scottykilmer gmail.com. Say appointment request, Rhode Island, and uh, I'm going to be here for quite some time till July. So I'm booking up, but I'm always willing to see people help them out with their problems. Let's say you got a real problem and maybe the dealer's been screwing you over. Bring it over here and let me make a video of it. Not only will we get revenge on the people trying to screw you over, but you'll often end up getting your car fixed for free because they don't like bad publicity. And I've got over 2 billion views on YouTube. So I've had them going for dealerships where they ripped somebody off for 12 grand in Houston. They got a $12,000 check back after the video went live, even though the manager said, oh, nothing I can do about it. Well, he changed his tune after the video went up. Bench Press 247 says, Scotty, are you still giving away new cars when we pay for the delivery fee? Well, I have never done that. You might watch the video I made a few weeks ago where I said, Scotty Kilmer's scamming people. And I said, it's not me. It's people pretending to be me. People pretend to be me all the time. It's the one and only me. And I'm telling you it right now. You go on YouTube, you see it's Scotty Kilmer. It's got a picture of me and my old Channel 11 shirt when I worked at CBS doing Crank It Up, car talk advice on TV. 
that's the icon you're going to see. You're going to see that avatar. And I'm Scotty Kilmer at gmail.com. So if somebody else gives you some weird thing with some weird number thing, ignore it. I'm not giving anything away but free advice. I'm telling you about cars, how to fix them, which ones to buy. I'm not affiliated with any corporations. They don't pay me any money to tell you lies. I work on the things I tell you what's good, what's bad. So, no, I never gave away any cars. <laughs> I drive old cars myself. Hey, my newest car is, you know, an 07, so that's pretty old. I like saving money, but I don't give things away. None of the companies, if the companies gave me a car, certainly I would give them away, but they're not giving me any. They don't like me because I insult their products too much, you know? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.